Some people zealously opposing the notion of salvation by works tend to underemphasize or fail to emphasize at all the necessity of repentance. If they do talk about repentance, they redefine it as something other than its true biblical meaning, or they prefer to speak of it as something that God causes altogether, but not as something requiring our cooperation with God, nor as it is meant to be defined as to turn from sin. They believe that when we speak of repentance as something we do in cooperation with the divine will, we are attributing salvation to our own efforts, which is tantamount to teaching salvation by works. Paul never said that salvation does not involve our cooperation with God. When he condemned the notion of justification by works of the law, he was specifically addressing the Judaizers who wanted to require non-Jewish converts to perform certain ritualistic acts that God never required of them. His point was that there is nothing a person can do to cause God to owe him salvation. That's not to say, however, that human cooperation, which involves the human ability of making free choices, is not involved in the process of salvation. Scripture is clear in pointing out that your decision of whether to repent while the window of opportunity is open to you has everlasting repercussions. Therefore, we should not hesitate to say that your decision to repent is an absolute requirement for salvation. Repentance from dead works is the first of the foundational doctrines listed in Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. Dead works are acts that lead to death. To repent of such acts is to stop committing them. To stop doing one thing means to start doing the opposite. If this change of direction can be described as works, then in that sense, works are required for salvation. That still does not mean, however, that you have done something to cause God to owe you salvation. Salvation is a free gift of God, and repentance is a condition for receiving the free gift. An analogy might be helpful here. A father gives his son a car as a high school graduation gift. Had the son not graduated, he would not have received his father's gift. The father did not owe his son a car. He gave him the car. The car was a gift even though the son was required to graduate before he could receive it. Similarly, God wants each of us to receive the free gift of salvation, but it requires us to cooperate with him before he will give it to us. Cooperation with God begins with repentance. Jesus, commenting on certain fateful events of the past, warned his listeners, Except you repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Luke chapter 12, verses 2 and 5. Repent or perish! Ultimately, that's the choice each of us will have to face. Peter's statement that God does not desire that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9 carries the same message. Those who do not ultimately come to repentance will surely perish. The message of the prophets God sent to Israel presented the same choice. Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent, and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. Wherefore turn yourselves and live ye. Ezekiel chapter 18 verses 30 through 32. Here God is speaking to the people of Israel in terms expressed in the Sinai covenant. But the principle of repent or perish is universal and underscores the importance of our cooperation with God in the salvation process. Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven.